All right, so it's the year 2025. You, you've you had a horrible startup draft. You're trying to figure out what is my next step. Uh, it's been two years. I can't get out of it. What is my what is my next step? How do I rebuild this freaking team? Because I just I, I weren't watching your startup videos yeah. and I fucked it up. I'm, I'm or, or maybe I'm Mark in Mexico in that last draft we were talking about where he drafted all old two years go by. You know you need to rebuild this team. What are the what are the steps that you're taking and I'm going to le- ask you that question, but I'm also going to say to lead this off, the number one thing with a rebuild is just, it, and really dynasty in general, it's being active and doing shit, keeping up with things. Like you should be competitive if you're on the up and up and know what's going on and are sending things out and getting offers. Like rebuilding is not going to be possible by sending one offer, getting mad because it doesn't work. It's going to be a lot of, yeah it's a lot of paper cuts you just got to keep throwing them out there and you can't win the value on every trade either on a rebuild no absolutely not that was um one of the reasons i wanted to get in here and talk about this is because y'all did a rebuild show a while back and um you did you said hey man i know you're not going to make it tonight we're doing a rebuild show this is you know right up your alley um what do you what do you got for me and i had this as soon as you said it i had this like magical like 12 texts worth of thoughts and i got one text out to you and i didn't get any more out you read it but it didn't have any context because it was one of 12 so and you know and and the and the reason i say it didn't have any context is because it was a brief it was you know it was a broad stroke first text and the 12th text would have been you know <laughs> the fine the, the fine tuning yeah. but it was like you know hey tw- trade anybody over 26 well of course that's your general idea um but it did say you know you just like you were saying you can't how much time do you want to put in Mm. how many offers do you want to send not terrible offers but the the minutia of the zeroing in a deal or it's close enough i'll take it and let's keep it moving right you know because that was what you know we you and i are just experimenting and rebuilding an ffpc team and it's just like hey man if if we throw in Mike Williams right here, I think this deal gets done and we can go. And you're like, well, yeah, but next year we could trade Mike Williams. I'm like, I know, but now we can get this deal done. He gets it done for us now. And I don't want to do this anymore. Right. I don't want to send any more offers to this guy. I think this is, this is how it works. And you know, so, and when you're rebuilding a team, that's why you need to get on that testosterone. We'd have more vigor to send more offers. Right. Get that, get that, get those uh, men, Charleston's men clinic pills or (laughs) shots or whatever's coming my way for the energy. I'll have more energy for my late night trades. Um, but for, you know, let's just say top down approach from, uh, a rebuild you, a, just like you said, how much time are you going to put into it? And let's just say average, let's say I'm going to put, I want to put an average time in it because either a, you are in college and you have all the time in the world and you can rebuild this thing big time or B you are semi-retired and you're just like, I'm, you know, 50 years old and my kids are kind of grown and I can do whatever I want to do. And part of what I want to do is try to master this dynasty stuff. That'd be fun. I got, I got some of that in my future <laughs> right now. I got two, I got two young kids and that's not in my future right now. So I'm, I'm going to be in the, I'm going to be in the second part of this, which is I'm going to have to settle for trades that aren't the best ever to get trades done. So I'm going to leave, I'm, I'm rebuilding a team right now and I'm going to read you some trades And they're not all fantastic. Some of them ended up being great just because of draft picks and what ended up, you know, draft, you, you get a first round pick and that person's first round pick turns into the one, one. So now I got Bijan on my team Mm -hmm. coming up in the rookie draft. That's great. But, and then, you know, so one of the things that I was going to be screaming from the mountaintops, if anybody wanted to listen when, in the uh, first rebuild episode that you did that I wasn't here was, you know, it's, it's not just trade away anybody over 26 or whatever. If you got Godwin on your team and it's not the right time to sell, don't sell. You know, just because you're rebuilding, you know, don't, doesn't mean that you have to trade away your best two players if they're not 22 years old. You got to sell the best guys that's going to give you the most at the right time. Mm-hmm. Right now, vice versa or whatever the best way to transition that is. I had um, uh, the old tight end for the Eagles who went to the Cardinals. Ertz. Ertz. And one of in our in our home league, the OG, the old home league, I'm rebuilding that team. And is it it's been a fun process. 
And I'll probably touch on some of those trades later. I want to get in this one team. But I had Ertz go this year, and I traded him away for a middle-ish third-round pick. It's non-tight end premium premium. This is before he got hurt, obviously. But and that's why I tra- like I got my teams going nowhere fast. And I want it to go nowhere fast so I get a better draft pick. And I have good players on my team. And one of them being Brees Hall, and he'd already gotten hurt. You know, you get a multiple benefits from trading away decent players. I didn't really have a good tight end to put in his spot. No offense. Not that he's not good, but this, you know, consistency isn't there. And at that point, it's like, well, I don't want Ertz to help me win one single game because it was a neck and neck at that point in the season. We're talking about we're in like week five, six, seven, something like that. Brees Hall's already hurt. Yeah, you lost Brees and then. Yeah. And there's no reason you're you were doing. I didn't want to win anyway. You were doing all right, though, for a minute there. But I wasn't trying to win anyway. But Brees was helping me and I had a couple other pieces that was helping me. Now you're like, I can't get any. I I got to Now the Brees is gone. I definitely got to get all the points out of my lineup. That too. And And literally there was one team that quote unquote could use him and then there was another team that had won it two times in a row and I didn't want to give him in, uh, I wouldn't trade him anything for anything. <laughs> I didn't want to give him a three P. Yeah. So no matter what I was, he was off my trade list. I wasn't giving him anybody to help him with. Sure. Um, cause you still got to compete. You still got that. Your juices are still flowing, even though you're trying to lose and get a better draft pick and, and restart all this capital. I'm not trying to give the guy to win. I'm not trying to help somebody win three times in a row. Fuck that. Absolutely not. But I did give it to a guy who I wanted to win a game or two. And I there was another guy who wanted him, but I had his draft pick and I wanted his draft pick to be better. So I wanted him to lose, you know, so that I didn't, that being said, all that being said and not being premium. So you don't, nobody's getting tight ends for their flexes. Right. So there's, you know, you're in a non-premium league. So you're just, nobody's flexing tight ends. Um, so I just gave him away to a guy who, you know, I wanted to this person to win and I wanted this person to lose. And I took the, I took a worse deal to, I got a third, a middle ish third round pick. I probably had a, an, an earlier third round pick offer, but I got rid of Ertz. Right. Sure. A couple of weeks later he gets hurt. That's just how football works. Sure. But I didn't want to take, there was, I did not want to take Ertz into the off season. And I just didn't want to trade him to the guy who could win three in a row. <laughs> of course. But I literally gave him to somebody who could help beat another team whose first round pick I had because I had uh, three first round picks already and they're all jockeying at the bottom and there was one in the middle and this and that. So just not to get any further into weeds about it. Yeah. I picked the team I wanted to give him to and I took a worse deal to move Ertz because that team could help my other draft pick, you know? Right. So it's just one of those things like, Hey, I I don't want, I don't want to give him to a team who I already had their first round pick and help that first round pick get worse. Sure. You know, not that hurts is some world beater, but he was doing decent. Yeah. And with, if the team in, you know, everybody Ky- needs Kyler to tight end. And a healthy hurts. Exactly. So that was just, that was just kind of a little, Hey, you don't always have to get the best deal. If yeah. it's their strategy behind it, you know, even when it went down, I think somebody was like, I can't believe you gave away hurts for nothing. And I'm like, if hurts goes to, to the end of the year on my team, maybe I literally get nothing for him anyway. You know, I'm going to get in a third round pick for, if Ertz finished the year and didn't get hurt and was averaging 14 points a game, man, yeah, that would look okay. But he's still like 32, 33 years old. Yeah. And then he gets hurt on top of it. So that, that was just like, hey, just get rid of him. And then, you know, finally I had a little space there to get rid of him to the team that I wanted to get rid of him. And I got, you know, decent deal. Didn't that late third round pick is might help me trade up from, you know, let's say, two seven to two five potentially you know it could be a player that i take but most likely that late round third third round pick that i got for zach Ertz is going to be a piece in a deal that makes me let me get me up, up get up a tier in the second round one or two spots one or two spots which you know that being said if it was zach Ertz still on my team that probably untradeable in the oh, right now for sure I you mean, know I, yeah, like you said unfortunately he didn't get hurt so that makes it a sure. little, you know, a little different, but 
Yeah, exactly. No, well, he, he probably, they, you know, I mean, maybe he would have went on and crushed the rest of the season and had some. How much value was going okay up? When but I mean, if you just if you just look at you know just look at these drafts that we were just doing and talking about a little while Zach ago, Ertz I mean, ain't on the board. Well, Zach Ertz isn't on the board, but I mean, it's still you know, is he going to go ahead of Joku and Waller in the eighth round? No, probably not. Absolutely not. Um, you know, so he he'd, no he'd be even if he finished the season and was, was pretty good. I mean, Dawson Knox, Dulcich, you know, tenth round, ninth round, no. Ertz He's not going that early. I'm just saying we don't. If he would have finished off and had, let's he say, let's say he averaged 14 points per game, right? He would have had to be crushing to still come back and get a 12th round startup value, right? So I'm just and that's tight that's ends, premium, just, right? That's premium. And that's premium. That's premium. That's Good point. I'm, you know, and so even later, yeah, um, but. So yeah, no, he he's either way. Even if he would have came back and did pretty well, I couldn't imagine it'd be tenth round or greater, just because where the tight ends kind of are. Yeah, and that's Agreed. premium, like you said. So Agreed. good, All good right. point there. So, but just wanted to say, you know, everybody, th- I've I've done a you know a lot of trade talk in this podcast in the years, and yeah, it's nice to feel like you really you know crush a trade or you get an offer and it's a smash accept. But a lot of times, man, if you really want to get a deal done. I, yeah, I've I've heard you talk about the trading scenario, and you know Jay Wayne's a keeper. He keeps his, his keeps his players. Doesn't do a ton of trading. You're kind of in the middle, and I trading for me is part of the process that mm-hmm. makes this game fun. I, we just had this conversation last week about flipping houses. If you don't, if you have never lost money flipping a house, you ain't flipping houses, right? Right. I literally am flipping a house right now. I'm probably gonna lose money. <laughs> it's just like trading, man. Yeah, it's fun. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna finish this house up. Might lose a little bit of money. I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna keep going. Right. I'm learning how to do this trading thing. One of these days, I'm gonna figure it out. Sometimes I win. Sometimes I lose. But if you're not trading, you're not playing fantasy football, yeah. especially dynasty, the way it's supposed to be played. You're not having as much fun as you can have. Well, and, and just going back to what I said off the rip, like the, the the best piece of advice that I can give you, people are like, you know, di- dynasty. How do you play? What's your style? Whatever. Like really, it's just, it's just staying fucking on the up and up, like just being active, sending offers, sending trades. That That's really the only way that you're going to stay good and current and, and never really just maybe have to retool instead of rebuild. Sure. Um, well, I mean, it's just, hard. It's hard to say, it's hard to just say send offers. To, well, I mean, sure. You know, but, but some people are so, scared to send an offer sure i mean the, those people aren't going to trade anyway and then you're probably going to sit in mediocrity for a lot because you're going to miss out on value and you're you're you're, you're, you're not going to be able to capitalize at the right times because you're at scared right to lose times. exactly you're scared to lose trades and yeah. you can't be scared to lose trades but i mean i don't know any any of the leagues that that i'm the more engaged in those leagues are always I'm always in the in the top six, always in the playoff hunt. You might have a down year or two. And it's the ones like FFPC for us where both of us kind of neglected that team. And guess what? Now it's in rebuilding. the fucking shitter. Yeah, because you because we're not being as active and not it's getting been, trying to find just, you know, not concentrate offers, but just those little bits of value that can make such a big difference throughout the year to just climb the ladder of fucking value. Right. Uh, you know, and that's. The trade that the email comes across trade accepted and you're like, oh, my God, I got to see what happened. And you see one and you're like, damn, I could have done that. Right. But you did. We haven't seen. We have sent enough of them. You're the you're the guy. Everybody's going, damn, I, w- I would have done exactly. that. that. You was, know, that was me I'm, three years ago. That was that was me three years ago. All my FFPC teams were climbing the ladder three years ago. You have a kid <laughs> and they're all that's what I'm saying. Tumbling right down. You know, yeah, they're all going right in the shitter. And you got the home leagues that you care about. and You're trying to build those back up. And you got the new ones that are fresh and those are fun. And especially the auction or startup that we just did. My, our oldest league is the only one that I'm, I'm rebuilding in currently. And it's the first time I've rebuilt that team. And it's the first time I've rebuilt any fucking team. Really? Like this is my first, the, the last year started rebuilding because I'm active league. in all those I other know, leagues. Exactly. And this league just happens to be old enough where it just ran yeah. its course and you had to do something different. Yeah. yeah that, Cause that I didn't know what I was doing when I started that fucking team up. That league is old and it's fun and it's uh and I'm I'm rebuilding and like you said I kind of chose to not be me at mediocre mediocre and two years ago I started the process two seasons ago I traded Alva Kamara at quote unquote the top and got a haul and I've been working from there because I had you know all my, I had Julio Jones AJ Green T Y Hilton and Brandon Cooks for five years just carrying me yeah and they all got old do you have Des on that team too at some no no not on that Another team league. yeah. Yeah, I mean that was a hell of a stable to to roll with there for a minute, but yeah, you know, and just, now it's you know as 
now we rebuild and it's been it's been a fun process but let me i got some real i okay. got i got trades and didn't mean to derail us then. well we took that we took that league and from my fantasy league on the sleeper and it's just well, i couldn't get all my trades put together it's this one that is the patreon league we have three patreon leagues now we had we just added a third one this year we had two for a, for a couple of years and i was in both of those i'm in all three because i'm a degenerate um but i was in the first two startups and they literally happened at basically the same exact time there was a 50 dollar league and a 100 dollar league i've talked about these multiple times the 50 dollar league <clears throat> i've won it three out of four years i'm not in that league no you're not <laughs> Because if you were in the league, I probably would have won it four out of four. <laughs> I've, I've won it three out of four years. And the $100 league, I I might be the worst team in the league. It's bad. So, and I came out, I tried to be just quick. I want, if for the new people, you've never heard this, but the old people you've heard, I tried to be quarterback heavy. I think I came out of that league with like Cam Newton, came out of that startup draft with Cam Newton somebody else that was supposed to be good and then <laughs> i came out quarterback heavy super flex and i can and mitchell trubisky had had a good year for the bears and he was running around a lot i took this was years ago so it's coming in, i took mitchell trubisky in like fifth or sixth round and then i took like medium to late ish nick Foles was still was supposed to be a starter mm. so i came out and so i had cam Foles, trubisky and somebody else and they all sucked like cam got hurt right away Trubisky got hurt his shoulder that year and went downhill from there. And we all know he's not as, even a starter anymore. Nick Foles wasn't bad, wasn't good very long. And whoever the fourth one was, he fucking sucked too. Mm-hmm. So, like, my whole quarterback, everybody sucked. It was awesome. It was, I mean, it was a, the tower burnt down before you even got to decorate. Yeah. It was, it was incredible. So, I had a couple of pieces and I, to Saquon Barkley, boom, hurt two years in a row. Boom. Right. You know, like right. nothing could go right. So, I had like, DK Metcalf, who I liked, I had Saquon, so he hadn't been. You know, he was coming. So coming into this past year, I'm like, all right, well, I I know I got to do something. And the year before that, I had a bunch. I had some first round picks because I was, you know, needing to start somewhere. I had two first round picks right there. Got that smash accept offer. Got Josh Allen offered to me for the two early first round picks. I didn't have any quarterbacks. Boom, took it. So last year, you know, the previous year, I had Josh Allen finally had a quarterback to start. And Saquon Barkley, he gets hurt again, and then the whole team sucks again. So I was like, I can't. There's it's a deep, deep starting lineup, so just can't fill the squad. So I'm like, all right, coming in this year, I'm like, all right, I got, I got Josh Allen, I got Saquon Barkley, I got DK Metcalf, I got George Kittle, got some other players, and the it's an early-ish rookie draft in this team. So I took Traylon Burks at one four because my team wasn't good enough to win anything in the we play for the one one it was bad enough to get a top you know to get a bye week in the losers bracket so mm-hmm. i was my team was bad enough to get a bye in the losers bracket but not good enough to win anything so i had the one four i took burks because walker and was gone you know um Brees was gone then the well, wide receiver to the falcons um drake and, wilson drake was gone and then um walker was gone and so I took Burks, and which I like, but obviously th- now the pick was Wilson. But who? How can you know that early in the process? Yeah, I guess early in the process we got a couple of cheap Wilsons. We did. We got two Wilsons on uh, FFPC. Um, so I that's I want to try to make it not too long winded here to get through what to set up the trades. So I had I had you know Burks and and DK Metcalf picked uh I think I took Isaiah Spiller at two four, Wondell Robinson at three four. Get going here. My first trade that I took, uh, I, you know, you like you said, there's trade offers and there's trade rejections and there's offers and there's negotiations and stuff like that. But the first trade that I finally got taken, and this is before the season started. And so before the season started, Trey Lance was a high second round pick, especially for me. I was a big Trey yeah. Lance guy going into last year before the season started. So I traded away Josh Allen in a couple in a three and a in a in a third round, two thirds in the consecutive years. Traded away Josh Allen. I got Trey Lance, Chris Godwin, and a first round pick. Now, three weeks later, when the season was on and Josh, Josh and Trey Lance has no ankle, and Josh Allen is like come out the best sure. the best six game stretch of his career, that trade felt or horrible. But before when I made it, sure, Josh Allen and Trey Lance not on the same level. 
But I got Chris Godwin, who immediately becomes my best wide receiver. It's mm-hmm. not maybe not maybe my most valuable because DK Metcalf was a year younger. You know, this was before the season started. So I got DK and and I got Traylon Burks. And now, and I'm literally before this in the last two years, I can't even come much less. I, I had Josh Allen as a quarterback and that's it. And I can't even keep a running back. I can't, you know, Saquon's hurt. Can't keep, I can't fill the whole lineup. Literally got nobody. My bench is horrible. I couldn't fill the lineup. So bringing in, it was kind of like, hey, how many two for ones can I make here and get first round picks? Right. So I traded away my best player, Josh Allen, get in the Trey Lance. Because if Trey Lance hits, this trade doesn't look terrible. If Trey Lance comes out last year and does, if Trey Lance is Justin Fields. Right. A first round pick in Chris Godwin. Or even just a smidge less of what Fields was production wise. Yeah. And you feel it's fine. And he's on the Niners. Right. Which is the opposite of the Bears, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like right. a, you can be a smidge less than trait than trait than um, uh, Justin Fields was, but you could double that output with actually throwing the ball to somebody yeah. too. So anyway, the team, you know, it feels terrible, but it's I, what I was doing. I felt was taking my team in the right direction. I got a starter, I got a first round pick, and I moved, you know, down obviously, but semi down lateral to another running quarterback, right. fantasy football, in a good situation, in a great situation. So that was the first trade I made. So now I got two first round picks. And again, obviously I trade away Josh Allen. So my team quote unquote gets worse. I wanted to make sure my team was as bad as it could be and keep, and I wanted to be, yeah, I might not be able to people. If, when you talk about rebuilding, if you play for the first round pick in the loser's bracket, you can, and the, don't get too bottled down and be like, well, I got to have good enough players to win and go to the one, one. First of all, People, anything can happen right. in that loser's bracket. If your team's bad enough, you get a bye. Right. So you're in the top four and you need to win one week to get to the top two. And, but don't keep players that you could actually get value for, for that scenario. Right. It do, now, don't get me wrong. If there's somebody that you're not going to get anything for, and it got a specific scenario later on in here, but I'll bring it up now because it's very relative, uh, relevant is, um, Brahim Mostert. Right. Right. At the very end of the year last year, right when I'm in the loser's bracket, there's no trade deadline in this league. And I could have traded Mostert, but I had Mostert trying to help me win that 1-1. Trying to help me win to get to the 1-1-1-2 matchup, right? right? And I should have traded him because it didn't matter. And I got an offer for a third round pick. I had I thought I could get a second round pick because I got a second round pick for Mostert in another league and I didn't earlier take it. though and yeah but a couple of weeks earlier not too much earlier because Mostert was hot Mostert was hot and especially now you're in the playoffs with no trade deadline and you got a team that could use a running back the dude offered me a third round pick I tried to hold out and get a second round pick then he did then he doesn't then he loses and now he doesn't want him anymore because right. he's not in the fan of playoffs anymore. Right. I'm like, well, shit, now I got nothing. And I got old ass Mostert. It's going to go die on my roster. So that's a third round pick I don't have. I should have traded him. Right. You know? But, you know, so that's just a very, very real scenario there that I should have got rid of him. And I didn't. And I didn't increase my draft stock any because sure. I lost. And I didn't trade Mostert. So, because, you know, and Mostert would have had a scored. 45 to help me win (laughs) you know so just trade these guys get anything you can get for those types of guys um so that was that trade so the next trade comes up and when you see i mean yeah i trade away barkley i trade away kittle i trade away josh allen so my team doesn't sound horrible but if you really look at it and you have two holes in your starting lineup before the season starts and nobody on your bench you're not winning so you have to be i've already been the worst team in the league for two seasons coming into last year Mm -hmm. i've I've, I've been the worst team in the league for maybe three seasons so if i'm not going to win i can't have these guys that are i can't have three quarters of a starting lineup get old on me i can't even i can't even put together a full starting lineup so i keep going i keep working i trade away saquon barkley and i get george pickens this is post draft i get um, Pickens and a first round pick and a third round pick. So, and that pick ends up becoming the one, one. So that one at the time, people were like, man, you just sold Barkley cheap. And I'm like, well, Bark literally in the chat. I can't believe, you know, I wanted Barkley. I want, everybody wants Barkley after the trade happens, right? but you won't give me nothing before the trade goes <laughs> down. Cause I tried to trade him everybody in the league. Yeah. Again, I'm going, let, give me another player 
and a first round pick. I'm trying. How many guys? I need to trade all my guys, bring in starters, and then first round picks. So I give away Barkley, Pickens. The first round pick becomes a one one, and I got a fourth, with an extra third the following year. So now we move forward. Uh, of course, yeah, we basically got two ones for Barkley. Exactly. What can you do? On a, again, though, on a losing team, you know, on a team where I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm trying to get rid of Barkley. You know, maybe I hold out for just this. Maybe this I can squeeze a little tighter and be a little different because I'm not. Uh, it does, it's not imperative that Barkley gets on my, off my team in that situation. Again, it's it's okay to not get every bit of value out of Barkley. Well, like, let me. It's just it's okay. You got you got good enough value. Like, sure. Well, and let me say this: like when I'm trading away Barkley there. I had a couple potential first round pick offers going back and forth. The player, the team that I really got deep down in negotiations with didn't necessarily need to be buying Barkley because he was better than me, but not a winner. Mm -hmm. Now he was started out solid because Barkley started out crushing and he had some good players, but that was like, you got to be strategic if you can be. Now I sold the Josh Allen to the best team in the league. I knew that. I knew that first round pick wasn't going to be that great. But to me, getting Godwin on a team that I had plenty of holes and the Trey Lance, I knew that first round pick was not going to be in loser's bracket. Could it have been 1-9, 1-10? Sure. They ended up winning. It's the one twelve, mm-hmm. right? I knew that I gave Josh Allen to a good team, but I got back a quarterback. I got back Chris Godwin. I got back a first round pick that I could play with. Right. You know, So I gave away Barkley. And I got Pickens and a first-round pick from a team that I thought had a really good chance of being in the loser's bracket. Did I get lucky and they went on the way through to the 1-1? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I did trade them to a team on purpose that another team that was a perennial playoff team wanted him and was going to match-ish the offer. I went with, you know, maybe I could have got a little bit better from the other guy, but you just take that, you roll that dice of being it. You want, you want as many first round picks to be in the losers bracket sure. as possible. Sure. You know, so that was, a, I got super lucky, ended up being the one, one, but there's another trade right there in a rebuild. So now again, I got to get the, I got to try to keep my team as being it. Yeah. I just brought in Chris Godwin and George Pickens. Pickens being a, you know, a raw rookie probably won't play a whole lot in my mind when I'm making these trades that I'm getting closer and closer to week one of the season. Um, I send away George Kittle, random first round pick non-premium in a premium. I wouldn't have done that. I would have had to get more for Kittle, but Kittle was a guy I've got, I've got him in a startup. I wanted him. And obviously he came on the, him and Purdy made magic this year. Mm-hmm. Him and Purdy made magic. So you just give him a quarterback who will throw it his way a little bit. No and doubt. We are good. But he Kittle hadn't done anything for this team. Mm-mm. And I've been super frustrated. He's been Kittle himself has been frustrating too. Yes. Quarterback play has been all over the place. Absolutely. Kittle's been a little banged up. Absolutely. So and you know, at this point I got four first round picks because I gave away Kittle. So now it's just becoming real fun. It's like, oh my God, I got four first round picks. Yeah, again, you say, oh, well, you had Kittle and you had, you still got DK and you had Barkley and you had Josh Allen. Doesn't sound that bad. Can't fill the first round, can't fill the lineup. Got rid of Kittle. Now I got a hole in my tight end spot. I'm tanking. Mm-hmm. I'm straight up tanking. And so, literally, I'm trading. And I, and I, at that point, I had Allen Robinson and I had, um, Trubisky was still in my squad and he was a starter for the Steelers. So I had a second quarterback and I had D'Angelo Henderson for the, for the uh, Rams and Cam Akers was De- uh, D'Angelo what? Henderson. It's it first, what's his first name? I'm, I'm blanking on Darryl. it. Daryl. Right Daryl. Yeah. Sorry, I, was my like, bad, I, was my bad. I know it's not D'Angelo. Yeah. 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 yeah <laughs> my bad. So I had, I had Daryl Henderson for the Rams. So week one gets here. I sent out it all. I sent out it all uh, to, you know, at everybody message in this group chat and i said i got alan robinson trubisky and daryl henderson all together because at this point henderson's kind of the starter acres is on the outs alan mm-hmm. robinson isn't terrible yet nobody knows that alan <laughs> and, and i didn't know either but right. i was like right again i'm like i got alan robinson he's got to go trubisky he's got to go and henderson he's got to go and i wasn't having any luck trading these guys individually i paired them up i said i put it in the group chat said everybody and it, you know once you start gathering first round picks, there's only so many to be had. Right. And, you know, so I said, I'll give you Allen Robinson, Trubisky and Henderson for a first round pick 
anybody that's got a first round pick that wants to trade it, I'll give you all three of those guys. Mm-hmm. And one dude said, it sounds like a decent trade to me. Because, I mean, literally at this point, you didn't know Robinson was going to be terrible. Seemed like a great chance for him to go over there and be awesome with Stafford. Trubisky's a starter. Yeah, he had been bad in the past, but we saw in a little bit of action with the with the um in that Bills ecosystem, he looked good right. for like three Had plays. Had enough juice to get himself a, a little burn. Yeah, 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 in yeah. Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, and again, if you're not a, if you didn't if you're not a picket guy, you're like Trubisky. Can hold, and the Steelers told you nothing other than Trubisky was a starter for the year. Yeah, they didn't even say he started for a little while. They were like, he's our starter this year. Pickett's on the bench. And then Henderson, the Rams running back, you know, it's running back. He was hot for a second, and I had to I had to capitalize. And I, I probably could have given you something else in that package, I, even though I'm running about running out of guys that anybody even knows at this point. Right, it's tradable on my team. Um, if I hadn't needed to start at, at this point in your strategy, I'm not gonna add, if they say, hey, you got to give me a second round big back. Well, I'm not gonna give you my two. Because I know right. I'm, I'm trying to have my first be as early as possible, which goes with when you're doing this, keep your second round or two. Don't devalue your second. Keep, if you got to stack up threes and fours, that's fine. How, are you really going to hit on a third round rookie pick? Probably not. Can it happen? I am. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you listen to Casey, you might get on a good third round pick. But, you know, I'll give you three threes and a deal to get something done. Because mm-hmm. that's just, you know, I'm giving you, I'll give you some some dollar bills out of my Well, wallet. I'm going to try to pick them up for free when I can, and then I'm going to dole them out when. Absolutely. To- Absolutely. So I got one person in, again, I had four first round picks at that point. So there's only eight left. And, you know, some people ain't going to trade them. But one person said, deal. He literally put it in the group chat, said something like, sounds good or something. He sent me and sent me the offer over. And, uh, I, I, of course I snapped it up cause that's what I asked for. And he sent it to me yeah. and that was it. So I got five first round picks and, um, I don't think I made another trade for that team all year long. I said, there's a bunch of rejected, you know, I tried to trade out all kind of stuff. And again, I right there at the very end of the year, I definitely messed up not getting rid of rid of Mostert. I got Mike white. I got Mike. <laughs> I white. got Mike white. I got Mike white. And uh, I had some people coming after him. I tried to get a two. They offered me a three, three times, and I kept turning it down. Like they'd well, the next week, they'd send it to me next, and, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm good." Um, and sure, there was a time there, right? You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, maybe I'd, if I'd have traded Mostert and Mike White, now I'd have two extra third round picks to play with in this draft and get make move up." But if Mike White goes, they say, "Mike, the Rams might want some Mike White." I mean. Yeah, I mean, you could go either way on that one. I'm found money. Do you do you just do you try to just get whatever you can the third or or keep Mike White? I'm I'm in that deal. I, I'm fine with rolling over with Mike White one more time and seeing if if I, I got a strike two, gold next season. If they, if they would have sure, if you get a two, yeah. But if I could have got I'm a saying, two for the price, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll chill. It was the, it was that good team too, you know. So yeah. like I'm not. I knew I knew you're a third. I knew you're a late three. At that point, it wasn't three twelve right. yet, but I knew you were going. You were top seed in the playoffs. So you had a bye week, so it was three nine or later. I was like, I'll keep, I'll keep Mike White. Um, so that's where I'm at. So currently, I'm I got five trade, I got five draft picks. I got Trey Lance coming back. Come on, come on, Trey Lance. I got no running backs to speak of, literally. Mostert and Smaj P. Ryan. It's okay. We don't need running backs until we're ready. Not right now. Until we're ready. That's you because know. now I got you know we got we got the draft coming up. Obviously, I'm about to have Bijan. Sure. And I got... You want that running back? Sure. So I'm about to have... I got Trey Lance. I got the 1-1, one, one, so I got Bijan. I don't have pick two or three, but I got four, five, and six. So that's going to be a fun run. What, what is there... And then 12. Two-fold question. And my huh? two. And I got two four. So I got five, I got five first and two four. So I got six players from two four and earlier. I'm going to give you a two-parter here. Mm-hmm. You got five picks or four picks or whatever. Five picks. Five first. Um... The first question is: Is do you entertain trading the one one at all? Yep. And then what are you what are you trying to get? And then the second question would be: How many of those? What, is, is there any sort of a ratio of like how many of these picks am I trying to make? How many am I trying to get rid of? How much am I trying to you know I'm trying to turn one of them into at least one of them into a twenty four? Yeah. You know. Yeah. What's um, what's uh, if you know you're in a complete rebuild, <clears throat> you know there are plenty of people who get the one one that don't have a tear down rebuild team. So, you know, getting Bijan, I've plenty of teams that I've seen where you got a, a dual running back injury or your two best players get hurt, and the worst team in the league gets it gets the pick, so they get a good they get one of the good players. So it's not just 
just because you have the one one doesn't necessarily mean that you're the absolute worst yeah, team no, in the no. league. But when you have five first round picks and you got a bunch of holes, how much how much do you need for the one one? And um, should you be trading it, or is it just take Bijan and keep it moving? Well, if we just want to talk about one one for a second here in Bijan, especially. And we can just remove the five first round picks if you want to out of this conversation. Just say you got the one one. Are you trading it for Bijan? Or, or trade? Are you like I've already had one team come after it? Um, and to my not off the top of my head, I think it's the same team that had that won that got the Josh Allen from me and won the trade, won the uh, won the league this year. They did win the championship, um, but they were offering a, the first package started with Kenneth Walker. Um, and had a couple of enticing little pieces with it. And I was like, no way, I can't do that. And then the second package had Josh Jacobs and some of the same t- enticing little p- pieces. And I was like, no way, I can't do that. I said, if the, if I'm going to get the deal done, the deal would have Kenneth Walker and Josh Jacobs in it. And so they sent that back and they were like, here's done. Perfect. Great. And I was like, no, 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 that's not, that's, the deal. A, that's a start. That would just be the baseline package. Yeah. And then it's going to have, and then some, and some, extra fun but not hey give me kenneth walker and josh jacobs and i think one of them was bellinger you know tied in for the Mm -hmm. giants um and just you know so like and then it kind of got a little squat they kind of got a little uh, standoffish like well that's what you said that's like that's not what i said that's not how i meant it if that's how you took it i said Mm -hmm. they would be in the package together i'm not you don't have enough you because you got josh allen and like lamar jackson and you know you don't have enough players that you want to trade away. Right. You, you coming after Bijan, you don't want to give me your best players. So right. you, basically you're asking for my best player. Right. Bijan's going to be the best player on my team and sure. you're trying to get him. So, cause we, so we got in this little back and forth and I was like, all right, go look at a startup right now. Go look at your latest mock and look at where Bijan is. Look at where Kenneth Walker is and look at where Josh Jacobs is and see if those trade that trade would go down. Those two spots where those players get drafted to go up to Bijan. And I'm like, that's most likely that trade's not happening. And if it is, it ain't, I'm still, I'm not taking it. Yeah. Um, so they were like, you know, well, you know, would you want Bellinger? And it might have been a Jahan Dotson, which I'm a huge Jahan Dotson fan, but it's there's not enough star power in that for me. It's as as much I just we just said earlier, like I'm taking Kenneth Walker in, in the late third of a startup. And yeah, but do you, do you even want Kenneth Walker and 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 Josh Jacobs? Do you want two running backs on that team right this minute? Not to, necessarily. To, you know, I just I Kenneth can, Kenneth Walker. I have to. Now I have now I have two, and I like Kenneth Walker. And I it's not like you need to trade Kenneth Walker because he's young enough. I think he's going to be great. Yeah, but you know, you're you're going in there with. With two RBs, whereas the, the one you could just get one of them and have and just now you got two guys that you might have to trade to go do something else instead exactly. of just having them. And that's why that so ended up the last and I can pull up right now. The last thing we said in that chat for that trade offer was me saying agree to disagree because mm-hmm. they were like, what we sent you was a fair deal. And I was like, agree to this. And I, it's not that it's not fair. It's something, something that was whatever the next thing that was said. And they're like something like you're going to regret that. And I was like, agree to disagree. I'm not going to regret not trading. Bijan. Right. I got, I literally had sincere trade talks. I wasn't just seeing what they would give me, but I was like, if that's what you're going to give, if this is the way you're going to try to package up, you need to put those, but you're exactly right. I don't want to trade away Bijan and have those two running backs and have to do something with them. Mm-hmm. If I can be, and you, to your point, I could be a bad team, which I am, or I can be a good team and get Bijan. But if the bad, if you feel out there, if you feel like you got a bad team and you got the one, one, unless you're blown away, and you might see so you might be at home listening to this. You might be like, "Hey, Josh Jacobs and Kenneth Walker and some and some fluff is you know." There's a certain there's be, a certain team where that away. where that's a great that's a great deal. But for what you have going on, it's not really what you want to be doing. I don't it, you know. And still, I mean, it's, I was I de- Josh Jacobs was de- I wasn't on the podcast much in the off season, but there was one I sincerely remember saying Josh Jacobs is a huge buy for me right now because everybody hates him. So I definitely like Josh Jacobs, and I I didn't I wasn't big on Walker last year coming in because I wasn't big on any rookie because I didn't know anything about him. And you're like, dude, we got to take this Walker fella because he's awesome. But we've known Bijan Robinson's name for like four years now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a cult hero. Already. Yeah. Did Walker look good in college and come in and translate to the NFL and be a be a beast? Yeah. But my gauge is I don't watch a lot of college football. I watch the Gamecocks play, not even as much as I used to now because I got babies. But 
if I don't know who you are, that means you might not be a transcendent player. Mm -hmm. If I know who you are, that means you might be a transcendent player because I don't watch college football. And if I know your name before the season's over, if I know your name and you still have two years that you have to play, yeah, that means you're probably a beast. And if that way, and if you don't fall off the map and you stay there, like there's some players, there's those freshmen that plopped up and they were like, mm-hmm. yep, he's going to be the one, one in dynasty. And by the time he's eligible to go to the NFL, Christian Hackenberg, never heard of him again, you know, right. Hackenberg, good pull. Um, you know, so I'm not trading away Bijan pretty much for anything. And let like, they would have had to bring in one of those big time quarterbacks. Right. You know, this getting straight t- that I can't even get. Give me Walker and Lamar. Right. Now you got a deal <laughs> because now I need a quarterback and I still get a lateral ish downward move for the running back, you know, and he's still young. I don't want Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. Yeah. You know, I don't, I won't be, Bijan's fun. He's fun. He's, if you, you know, you play this game generally, first of all, to have fun and then use it in your ways to figure out what, what you know, what are your motives. But, if you got the one one and you have a bad team, just let Bijan get on the field. Right. Even if he gets hurt, you're not going to get a well, that's, that much less. I guess that's what's going to be kind of my answer. Is. Here's the thing: if Bijan gets hurt, you're not going to get that much less. Saquon Barkley spent two years being hurt. I just got a first round pick and George Pickens for him before he even got back on the field to prove he wasn't hurt. Yeah. He was just pract- He was just in, you know, sitting out of preseason games because he was quote unquote healthy and he looked awesome and I missed him, but I didn't miss him one bit because I'm rebuilding my team. Right. And so now I get to start over with Bijan and I can see if my team's any good in 12 months right. and trade Bijan and probably trade him for more than I'm going to get right now. It's very possible. And if he gets hurt, it's not going to be that much less. I might have to write the day he gets hurt. It might be that much less. Right. And then, I mean, JT just spent, you know, a chunk of this season kind of hurt and, and not great and still is the second or third running back off the board. Exactly. Cause there's not that many choices. Right. So I can tell you this time next year, no matter what happens with Bijan, he's going to be a top five running back taken off the board. Right now, he's the first. He'd have back. to come back and just be horrible out there to just be just absolutely dog shit. Second which year is Trent not, Richardson, which is not going to happen. Second, yeah, second I mean, year Trent Richardson. Yeah, basically. I yeah, mean, first year Trent Richardson was a stud. Yeah, I, I you know that's. I think that's basically would would be my answer to the. Yeah, I'm fine with trading him. It's got to be a, a great. It's got to be a great offer. I don't think you, you should certainly pursue it. You should see what's out there to do it. You don't need to do it because you could just put them on your team and fucking go on down the road. Right. And then you, you're not, you're not, he gets on your team. He might even gain a little value until they even play a game. Once he's on your team. Cause it's like yeah. the, the mystique of Bijan is growing. I missed him in the draft. I really fucking want him. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and he gets on the field and has a couple of good games or, or looks fine. I mean, I just, there's no reason to have to, to push it. You can just put them on the team and know that your team stinks. Let's put it. Let me put it like this. I'm a numbers guy. I do a lot of th- some of my stuff based on odds. You are more than likely, if you trade Bijan, no matter what kind of team you got, you're more than likely going to regret it. Even if you think you won the trade, you are more than likely going to regret it. There might be, obviously, if he blows his knee in the first game of his career and he's never the same again, That that's different. Take that out of, you know. He could get hurt, a regular ACL injury, and come back and be just fine. That's not even what I'm talking about, you know. But just that awkward Marshawn Lattimore injury where yeah. his knee just goes the wrong direction in two different you know at the same time sure. and he's you know he goes ah, from, Lattimore. that's what i'm saying mm. he, if he has that injury then you might regret not selling him for anything but the point is you're probably going to regret selling him just like you said put him on your team see where you are in 12 months how many how many of those picks are you moving to the next year or what's the strategy with that many picks well is it are you, are you targeting more veterans? It's just it's, are it's, you moving them back? What are you doing? Luckily, I got the one one, but unluckily, I don't got the two or the three. So it's probably going to take both of those quarterbacks out. And even though we were just now talking about earlier in the startups, how I don't really, I'm not going to put that much value in Stroud and Young and the rookie draft. Two I, three. I want to be on the clock there so I can trade it to somebody. Mm-hmm. They're going to be gone. I won't get to trade it to somebody. So that was the unlucky part. Right. So four, five, and six, uh, you know, I'm going to most likely trade back one or once or twice um, and just try to push some stuff to the next year. Um, there's a 
a handful of guys there. I've, I've already it, sleepers pretty cool. You can mock draft the uh, the rookie draft mm-hmm. by yourself, and I've already made those picks a hundred times. <laughs> and you know, it is an algorithm to it. It's not old school mock draft back in the day where it's the same players in the same order, and you do it twice, and you know who's going to be there. So like, there is a lot. The four, five, six doesn't change because the quarterbacks always go two, three. Mm-hmm. So my choices have never changed in four, five, six what I get to look at at 112 and 24 changes every time. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll definitely be looking, you know, and of course the players I'm playing against in that league are going to listen to this. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely looking to trade back one or two of those picks just to have fun. But I can promise you this. If I don't trade back, I'm, I got my three guys and I'm ready to make the picks right now. And yeah. It's going to be fun. I mean, you got You got to try to, I think you got to at least turn one of those into a 24. Yeah. One just way try, or another, like take fun. it, take it, move it back to the second and see if you can get it and, and give something else up and try to just move it back to a 24 and just right. start the next, start the next year off with two Go picks on. in that, in that round. So you got equity to play with and, and move around. If you have five pick, five, especially in a team like mine, who's literally rebuilding from the ground up here, if you have five picks in the first, there's no reason to not have multiple picks in the first round for the next two or three years. Yeah. Right. Then you know, I'm not going to say it, might, it. it stinks a little bit to not take the guy because it's rookie Obviously. time and you want to take him. But the, the flexibility that it just gives you to just start off a year with two first round picks. Yeah. And and you're just I'm you're not, helping yourself out yeah. so much with flexibility and, flu, you know, and, and capital and, and just ability to be fluid and make yeah. moves, you, uh, you know, and I'm not going to say. Hey, let me that means I get first round, multiple first round picks into perpetuity. I'm just saying. If I can trade back now, that'll give me multiple picks next year. Right. Like you're saying now, and I've said it before, if you've got two first round picks, you got leverage. If you got three first round picks, you got power. You can pretty much do as much as you want to do. Yeah. I got five. There's no reason to take five first round picks on this team. I need to trade some back, push it into the future. Let some other guy see that the, the key is I got five. So that's seven other ones. And there's 11 other members. So. I got four extra, so there's four guys that don't have first. Right. You know, and there might be another team in here that has multiple. They want they want that one right Somebody now. So they're trying to give that twenty four up. Somebody will pay a little because right. they gotta be in the action right now. I wanna be in the action too. <laughs> How could you not? It's gonna be hard to trade off, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Well there there will be a a point where, yeah, I'm not gonna like I'm not going to have any picks for a year and maybe two because it's time I'm, I got to, I've, I've got to the point where my shit is really good. I'm one of the better teams in the league. I'm going to fucking unload the chamber and just try to buy a, a couple of savvy vets here off some teams that are rebuilding now. And mm-hmm. so it's not always just keep some in the chamber. We'll go back to that after we eat shit for a year because we traded all our picks away. Cause eventually I have no problem with getting rid of all my picks to try to win. Right. Well, and I, all of our, all of our, uh, FFPC teams two years ago didn't have any first the next year because they were all one seven or one nine. We had gotten to playoffs and got beat, and we traded the one set in every one of those leagues. We traded all of our we traded our first round pick and our first round pick next year, and we go went up and we got Jonathan Taylor mm-hmm. on all of our teams. Um, and that you know, like you said, there's just times where you trade up. And there's times where you trade back. Right. And there's times when you make the pick. And of course, at the one seven, if we would have taken uh, Justin Jefferson, then we could have had sure. the best wide receiver in the game and still had our first round pick next year. But Jonathan Taylor was the pick and we went up there and got him. Right. You know, um, or what? And maybe even I got those draft classes mixed up, and Justin Jefferson was the next year. It's just a, the same idea. Is right. You don't when you get closer to the front, you quote unquote have a better chance of getting the best player, and that's not always the case. There's plenty of Laquan Treadwells to go around, mm-hmm. but you know. So you, if you can make the trade up right now to go get Bijan, I think you need to do what you got to do. Um, if you don't have Bijan, or you, you know, you're trading back, you think so you push. In that in that OG league we talked about, I last year I gave away a ton to trade back. I had I had some first round picks, mm-hmm. and I traded back with the guy who was the worst team in the league. Yeah, and I traded back twice in the same. And I I sent him a trade offer. Again, this is me rebuilding, and I had four first round picks last year in this league. I traded back from one six, and I had one ten. I had one one. I took Brees Hall. I had five and six together. Five, I took Pickens because I was in love with him and I needed to take him. And I had six and I had 10. 
and I picked a bit worse team in the league. And I went to him and I said, hey, I'll trade. I'll give you the one six and I'll give you the one ten. I'll fall back here and I'll get your second round pick and some trash to get your first round pick next year. And this is a cool dude. We played flag football with him. Love him. And he's kind of ish new. And this is probably his first dynasty league he's ever played in. Mm. And I said, and he said, all right, I'll take it. I'll do it. And I said, all right, before you accept this trade, this pick I'm getting from you, we don't play for the one one. You just got the worst record to get the one one. Yeah. I said, you're probably giving up the first pick in the draft next year. But if you take this pick, because he had one of those picks, so I gave him like three picks in a row. Right. Um, or three out of four picks. So I was like, so if you take this trade, you're gonna be able to get Alave, Wilson, and somebody else, like right here, bang, bang, bang. You're guaranteed Scott Moore was in that conversation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There was a bunch of players right there. I was like, if you, you if you take this trade, you're gonna get six. And he might have had seven and eight, nine. And, and then Damian you Pierce was super high in that draft. Right. So there was another receiver pushed Something down, like maybe that. Jamison Williams. Yeah. So I was like, you're going to get these guys. And, and, but if you give me your first round pick next year, it's probably the one, one. Um, and he said, I understand. Thanks for taking the time to tell me that, but I'll, I'll take the deal. Yeah. And so this year I have the one, one, his team stinks and his team stunk, but he does have a bunch of, he got some good receivers, but he, one of the picks was Jamison Williams, which really helped me out. Well, really? I was a bummer. It was like, you're trading, you're trading him next year's pick and you're, he's, he's getting a good player presumably, but it's just all he's doing is you, and he really getting him again with helps he's him helping you. Yeah. He helps oh, yeah. him at the one, one by taking Jamison Williams in that lot of guys um, I got a lot of picks huge. in that league, but I think all yours are better than mine. Uh, which two is of a them real are. bummer. Two of them are. I got that pin. What Pinyak made the playoffs that one league, that one pick. I think I got four first rounders. I got three. I got the one, one, the one, two, and like wherever Brian, uh, is it Brian? Yeah, wherever he finished up, he made the playoffs. So he's got seven or eight. I don't think any of mine are great. Yeah. So, well, but whatever. I mean, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited about moving forward with with that team but that went directly into the rebuild strategy of and it was hard for it was hard to make the trade i'm not gonna lie because i i had sure i took pickings at five but i had six and i had 10 so the same thing i was saying to what i was giving away was if that was two more fun players now or you zeroed in on the guy who's had the best probability. The probability of 1-1 one, of, one of the one, Bijan. One. And which then, you would trade whoever. You would t- trade Jamison Williams and Olave for Bijan. Right. So, and then. I mean, Olave is pretty high up there. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's not the best example. But but you still would. You'd have yeah. to. That's what it would take. You right. know, something like that. Olave and Jamison Williams to get it done. And I'd, so, and then my. I wouldn't and, trade Bijan for those guys. Yeah. Me neither. That's why I fucking did the deal. <laughs> and then my team sucks too. So I got the one too. Cause I traded away. You right. Know, so Brees Hall got hurt. And that was a team where I was talking about earlier. I traded away Ertz and I gave away everything. That stupid team fucking made the playoffs trying to lose. You were trying to lose and your team won, you know? So what can you do? So Son of a bitch. having some fun with some rebuilds. Yeah. Here. Well, I'm putting the fun back in fantasy, you know? All right. You good? Everybody good? You ready to get out of here? Ready to go to sleep. I am ready to go to sleep as well. All right, guys. We appreciate you. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. All that good jazz. Five-star reviews. Patreon is is wide open. Come holler at your boys. Get in some of these mock drafts that we're talking about. Uh, be doing uh, lots of fun stuff in the offseason. Can't imagine we don't have a Patreon startup this year for Patreon. Oh, there's four. for sure going to be it a Patreon. It needs to be an auction. Uh, it's absolutely going to be an auction. Mm-hmm. We're going to do one of those for sure. Yep, 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 yep. 100, 150-ish, somewhere in there. We're going to definitely be doing one of those. But uh, So $5 holler, come join the uh, community and, and, and hang out with your boys, getting at least three extra shows a month. We'll, we'll have some uh, rookie rankings uh, coming up here after the draft, and you'll have access to those. Lots oh. of fun stuff, Discord, all that good stuff. So appreciate you, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.